Welcome everyone to today's forum and happy new year to everyone. My name is Christy Park and I'm the director of the Texas Digital Library. I'm so glad that you all have joined us today. We're going to begin today by acknowledging that we are all joining today from the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what now is called North America. Though TDL staff works fully remotely and we all join from specific places throughout Texas and elsewhere. Uh, I, along with many TDL staff, join from Austin and the Central Texas area, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. Leo will paste some links in chat where you can learn more about the indigenous lands in Texas and elsewhere, and we hope you'll do that. Here's our agenda for today. After some updates from me, we're going to report out highlights on some services and projects, followed by a few event and community updates. You'll be hearing from me, our Deputy Director Courtney Muma, our DPLA Service Coordinator Elliot Williams, and our Communications Manager Leah DeForest. Okay, so let's move into our services updates. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I have a few updates before we get to that. So I'll um, start with some, some director updates. So at a forum last summer, um, we shared some initiatives from our strategic plan that involve investments of our cash reserve to further the mission of TDL and support the success of our members and partners. And we have begun work on all of these initiatives involving our investment of the cash reserve. We want to keep you posted as we make progress on them. One of our investments is funding a three-year ACRL Diversity Alliance residency focused on digital libraries that will provide a meaningful professional experience for an early career librarian interested in pursuing a career in digital library or archives work. Courtney Muma, our deputy director, is coordinating this endeavor, and she has convened a planning committee, which met for the first time last week to help us structure the residency program and plan for hiring and supporting a candidate for the position. That planning committee is made up of TDL members recommended to us by their deans or directors, as well as some TDL folks and a representative of our governing board, Athena Jackson, who's the Dean of Libraries at the University of Houston. The names of the committee members are on the slide here, along with Athena, Courtney, and myself. The committee is really fortunate um, to have, in addition, uh, let's see, a few folks, um, Alyssa Guzman of UT Austin Libraries, who has coordinated UT's diversity residency program at UT for several years now. Stacy Johnson from Sam Houston State University. Moon Young Kong Larson from UT Southwestern Medical Center. And Atiana Uriri from UT Rio Grande Valley. This awesome group. We'll be reaching out to all of you, our TDL community at numerous points along the way through our user groups and other channels to engage you in this process um, of preparing and supporting a diversity residency in digital libraries for TDL. And I'm looking forward to keeping you all posted as we make progress and looking forward to having Courtney keep you posted as well. So um, uh, we'll let you know as we have news about that. All right, next up, we are just a few months away from welcoming everyone to our next annual conference, the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. We're really excited about it. As you know, TCDL will be fully virtual again this year and will run May 23rd through 26th. Our 2022 theme, Digital Juggling, is meant to spark your imaginations and serve as a kind of lighthearted acknowledgement that while we're in that while we in libraries and archives do not work for a circus, we might feel like acrobats sometimes, juggling disparate projects and shifting priorities, serving multiple roles at work and home, and learning new skills and tools that keep us connected with researchers, students, patrons, and teams. Our call for proposals closed earlier in the week, 
and we're delighted that so many folks submitted proposals this year. But even if you didn't submit a proposal, the committee is concocting all kinds of ways that you can engage in the conference in meaningful ways through a, a number of new and exciting program formats and, and, and some of the more familiar ways as well. Also, I wanna remind everybody that registration is open and we offer discounted registration for members, students, and retirees. And we also have a free registration option to anybody that wants to take advantage of that, particularly if you don't have institutional funding to attend. So we'll paste some links in chat here where you can read up and learn more about TCDL and get yourselves registered. And a quick reminder to anybody out there um, here, here today from UT Austin that we have a separate registration process for you. So definitely be in contact with Leah or, or any of us to get that link. All right, speaking of TCDL, we have more exciting news on that front. Uh, the program committee is thrilled to be welcoming Elaine L. Westbrooks as the keynote speaker for the 2022 TCDL opening plenary. Elaine Westbrooks is the vice provost for university libraries at and the university librarian at UNC Chapel Hill. She came highly recommended by our conference committee members who were really inspired by her institution's reckoning initiative which has started to change the individual, interpersonal, and organizational layers of systemic inequality in the library. We're gonna post some links in chat again, where you can learn more about um, Elaine Westbrooks, and we're just really excited uh, to have her speak to our community about the work that she and the UNC Chapel Hill libraries are doing. And finally, remember to nominate yourself or a colleague for a TDL award. Each year, these awards honor individuals and groups that have made outstanding contributions to the advancement of digital libraries. From large scale institution wide projects to individuals on tiny under resourced teams, these annual awards recognize the inspiring work that you all do as library and archives workers, researchers, and students. Um, everyone here contributes to such amazing work every day. We love to recognize you or your colleagues at this year's award ceremony. And I think Leah is gonna share, or maybe just shared a few links in chat about that. Um, and next up, we're gonna now move on to some updates about TDL services. All right. So I'll start and then I'm going to hand it over to Courtney for a few others. Um, and I'll start with uh, repository hosting and journal hosting updates. So D -space, our DSpace tech lead, Nick Woodward, um, continues work to migrate our DSpace repositories to an updated operating system. This work has been going in fits and starts for a couple of months as we um, got interrupted several times um, at here at the start of the year with other projects and tasks that took priority. So this work will likely continue through the start of TCDL and we'll be in communication through the DSpace user group and, and an email with repository managers as we go down the list of our hosted repositories. And speaking of the DSpace user group, the next meeting of that group is Tuesday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. We'll convene under a new chair, the aptly named Charity Stokes, a metadata librarian from Texas A&M Libraries. So hope you'll join us there um, if you're uh, working in or interested in DSpace. For our journal hosting service, um, we recently completed or substantially completed the migration of an Arizona state sponsored journal, Borrowers and Lenders, the Journal of Shakespeare and Appropriation to TDL Systems. We're excited to have that uh, in, our, um, in our list of hosted journals. Our next OJS user group meeting is March 3rd. And uh, we have a couple of important topics on the docket for that meeting. We're continuing a series of discussions and documentation projects around consortium wide and institutional level 
policy development for journal hosting and library publishing services. And additionally, I'll be providing some updates on the timing and process of OJS 3.3 upgrades. So if you're working in your library with journals and library publishing, you'll, you'll definitely want to um, attend that meeting. Leah's pasting some links in the chat with info um, about those user group meetings, so we hope you can join if you're able to. And now I'm going to hand it over to Courtney to continue with our service updates. Thank you, Christy. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to start with a digital preservation service update. Um, as some of you might remember, at the end of 2021, TDL conducted a survey to help us share resources, strategies, and experiences to help strengthen our commitment to digital preservation here in Texas and the region. We wanted to learn about the various tools, workflows, and policies that you all have in place so we can shape the digital preservation training and learning opportunities we offer in the coming years. So first, I want to thank again all of the 25 folks who completed the survey. Um, I used the results to write a blog post about the learning objectives from that survey. So in overall, um, we have targeted internal documentation, discrete tools, grants, basic training opportunities, software and formats, tools using the command line, and digital forensics as areas where we can direct our attention and provide sharing training and learning opportunities. Many respondents offered to share their documentation too, so I'll be reaching out directly to them in the coming months and hopefully really building up our resources on the wiki. Advocacy is also something respondents asked for more help with, so I will continue expanding our advocacy efforts in digital preservation. Please also join our Web Archiving Texas interest group meeting Thursday, February 24th at 11 a.m., where we'll be discussing the recent webinar from the Web Recorder team and how this TDL group can help improve collective web archiving in Texas. And finally, let's move on to Vireo. Um, I have really great news that I've been waiting to say out loud for such a long time, um, it feels like. So first of all, hooray to Frank Smutniak, TDL's uh, senior developer who works primarily on Vireo. Um, and also thanks to John Krosno's excellent feedback during the migration process at UT Southwest Medical. Um, they are now in production using Vireo 4 and students have actually submitted their theses and dissertations through Vireo 4. Um, this is very exciting for us at TDL and a long time coming. So after this first one, you know, we have a lot of little bugs and tweaks to fix, but the next 12 will hopefully go much more smoothly with the great feedback that we've gotten from John and from other users as we've um, been working out kinks at several other in installation sites. So all Vireo users will need to get back with us about their ideal timing and an email about that will be going out probably later today. Now I'm going to move on to research data management. Um, so first of all, happy Love Data Week. Uh, this is Love Data Week, and I know many of you are probably offering um, events to celebrate, and if you are, please do share them in chat. We'd love to hear about them. TDL, of course, is having a love-in, which you'll hear more about from Elliot in a moment. Yesterday, TDL and the Global Dataverse Community Consortium started working on a two-part project led by developers Jim Myers, with whom we've worked in the past, and also Don Sizemore of the Odom Institute at UNC Chapel Hill. And their work is going to help us improve the TDR Dataverse infrastructure, update the software this quarter, and implement our digital preservation strategy, which is to preserve all published data sets in Chronopolis via TDL's DuraCloud. The TDR Steering Committee is currently conducting its Texas Data Repository User Survey as well, which closes March 22nd, and we hope to gather extensive data from this to help improve liaison services. And just a quick update here about carpentries. Um, please do attend the TexCarp meeting on February 28th. 
strength. If you're interested in carpentries in Texas and building out our structure here, we have one confirmed workshop location so far, but we're looking for several more. Um, and I have permission to tell you that that's Texas Tech. Um, and we're looking at the end of the summer. Um, Heidi Winkler is here and Heidi, you can add a little more to the chat if you'd like to. And I'm sure uh, we'll probably have dates coming out here in the next couple of months, hopefully for that. Now I'll hand over to Elliot to remind you about our love -in. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Elliot Williams. I use he, him pronouns, and I am TDL's DPLA Aggregation Service Coordinator. Um, and I wanted to just remind everyone about the Digital Collections Love-In that we're hosting later this week. Um, because it's Valentine's Day and also International Love Data Week, as Courtney was saying, um, we want to hear how libraries in our community are sharing the digital collections love. Um, we've had a really great response already to this event with over 60 people registered, including I know some of you who are here today. Um, and that represents 40 different organizations across the state, um, including public libraries, academic libraries, community archives. Um, so I think it's going to be a really great mix of people. I'm hoping it's going to be an informal and fun event. Um, about a dozen folks have volunteered to share the, their digital collections, exhibits, and repositories, the things that they love. Um, and there'll be plenty of time for everyone to talk about the work that you and your colleagues have done. Um, I'm really excited to learn more about the TDL community and digital collections in Texas. And given the number of registrations for the event, I think I'm not the only one who's excited about it. The event is going to be held tomorrow, Thursday, February 17th, from 1 to 2.30 PM Central. Um, and it's open to anyone. So whether you work with digitizing materials materials, creating metadata, curating digital collections, or just think that digital collections are cool. I hope you'll join us. Um, registration is still open. I think Leah just dropped the link for that in the chat. And so I hope you'll join us. And now I will hand things over to Leah for some updates from TDL's members, friends, and partners. Right on. Thanks, Elliot. And good morning, everyone. This is Leah DeForest. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the communications manager with Texas Digital Library. I have a few events and opportunities from within our member community and beyond, so here goes. First up, Texas Women's University's Open Pedagogy community is excited to announce their first Open Educational Practices Conference, and this is scheduled for April 20th and 21st. The conference is going to be fully online, and they have a, a CFP uh, open for a bit, and I think until March 15th is their deadline and hit some proposal topic ideas include sharing open educational practice activities and student responses to the assignments. Um, using OER or open educational resources and how those can contribute to a more open, inclusive and accessible classroom and also culturally responsive OER or open educational practices and any of the content that may have been adapted or adopted or um, created. Um, if you want to demonstrate any digital tools or technologies and sharing any ideas about how to get started incorporating OER or open educational practices in general in your courses, seems like it's just a really wide open and fun informal place to share about your open pedagogy practice on your campus. And so again, this is going to be fully online and they're accepting proposals for presentations through March 15th. And uh, another of our members, UTSA, is going to be hosting STEM Librarian South. That conference brings together information professionals and academics to discuss current research, ideas, insights, best practices that will advance STEM research and education. And this conference is a really unique opportunity for professionals in the field to present their latest work, learn from your peers, network with colleagues in a really um, small conference setting. And so UT San Antonio Libraries is hosting this year's conference and they asked us um, uh, members and anyone who's a prospective attendee to respond to a poll gauging their interest in an in-person event in downtown San Antonio, or would you rather see a virtual conference setting? And so for more information about that, um, I think Christy's gonna share a link to um, that poll that they have. And um, we're also gonna share a link to the conference website. So you can check that out. And next up, this is a really cool opportunity for anyone who's interested. This um, might be most beneficial or of interest to research data practitioners and users of research data or research data platforms, but the 
U.S. National Library of Medicine is putting on a really fantastic and free workshop that will address issues around the evolving ecosystem of biomedical data and the challenges of data curation at scale and in service of rapid dissemination. And so anyone is, is free to attend this. The registration is free. It is a fully virtual uh, workshop and it's March 28th through 30th. We're gonna drop a link to that in chat where you can learn more. And if you are able to attend and, and wanna share out what you learned, we'd love to hear about it, maybe at a future forum or blog post or something like that. We also ask that you save the date for our first webinar in our accessible AV series. We're planning for a free and open to anyone webinar on March 30th, and we really hope you'll join TDL and our members, Emily Vinson of University of Houston, William Hicks of the University of North Texas, and Daniel Jacobs of UT Austin for an introduction to accessible AV. So again, try to save the date if you can on March 30th. We're looking for a time on that day, and we'll send you all uh, a proper invitation with a link to register and all that as soon as we have that time nailed down. And finally, um, this is kind of a big deal. Open Repositories is coming together again this year in person, um, for real, in, uh, in Colorado, Denver, Colorado, June 6th through 9th. Open Repositories is, um, a lot of our members like to attend that conference and have gotten a lot out of that conference. And so this is kind of like giddiness. Uh, I feel like a sense of a lot of excitement around this conference. OR is looking for proposals on the overall theme of building trust together. And some of the practical topics related to that theme around digital repositories and integrating repositories with other platforms, integrating content that might be of novel or complex formats, uh, collaborations and different communities and building trust among our teams and different institutions, platforms and software, supporting reproducible research discovery, use, reuse, impact, and building future repositories. And they have a call for proposals out. We'll drop a link in chat, and that's going to be closing at the end of this month on February 28th. And finally, some of you may have saw this email come out uh, yesterday through the DLF forum, um, but or DLF listserv, but the uh, Authenticity Project was just announced yesterday and the HBCU Library Alliance alongside the Council for Library and Information Resources and the Digital Library Federation are jointly presenting the Authenticity Project, which is a fellowship and networking program that's designed to provide mentoring and learning and leadership opportunities for early and mid-career staff, um, library staff from American HBCUs which stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. This will also include opportunities to build more authentic and genuine exchange, authentic connections among our participants, uh, the participants from HBCUs and um, partnering with predominantly white institutions. This application is open now through March 15th, 2022. And you know, I'm not sure what's all entailed with that application, but if you decide to apply and if there's anything TDL can do to help support you in your application, please let us know and we'll, we'll do what we can. I think that's it for me. And now I'll hand things back to Christy to close us out. Okay, I'll just note here um, on this slide, our upcoming TDL meetings and events. Um, we have as usual, a lot of things going on in February and March. Um, we'll paste some links in the chat where you can learn more and sign up about those. And I do want to emphasize that March 4th deadline for TDL awards and nominations. Um, be sure to recognize your colleagues or your own work um, in your own at your own institutions um, for those awards. All right, and I think that's it. And we'll um, pause. We have a little bit of time here at the end, just a few minutes for any questions. Um, and uh, please, uh, please feel free to enter those in chat or un unmute yourself and ask them if you'd like to do that. Um, while you're writing your questions, there was a question. Um, Courtney, early on from James about a link to the Vurio documents in the IR. I'm not sure if they're in the IR or if there was, if they're just the documentation to, 
to, for Virio that's in the um, in the wiki. Yeah, James, we have we have our confluence documentation, which is the user facing documentation, and then Frank has all of the migration documentation in the um, the, the GitHub. Um, and I think Frank is here too, but also James, you can ping us in, in Slack um, if you wanna clarify what you're looking for. Oh uh, yeah, thanks Courtney. Well, um, actually what I was interested in was uh, the actual um, student submissions, if those had gotten into DSpace. Oh, that would be John Cross, no. <laughs> My guess no. is, yeah, my guess no. is they haven't made their way to the repository yet. They're still in Vireo. And they and they and they and they are, we have a two year embargo for default. So so in two years we'll give you that link, James. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Any other questions? Well, since we since we ended we're kind of ending on a Vireo um, question. I, I just want to add my congratulations and, and thanks to Frank, John, James, the entire community of Vireo folks um, who have gotten us to this point. We're excited about getting all of our um, hosted ETD platforms up to the new version and, and that'll be coming in the next few months. So big, big thanks to John for helping um, with that process. And also to folks at UT, UT Dallas, Texas Tech, there are a number of institutions we've been working with on these early migrations that have just been hugely helpful in finding all the, uh, the kinks that need to get worked out. I think I saw Susan Elkins here and um, oh, in Susan, right? Sam Houston. Huge shout out to Susan, um, who's giving us kind of concurrently with John just about as much help working out those kinks. So thank you, Susan. Awesome. It's a, it really takes the whole community, doesn't it? All right. Well, um, we'll wrap it up unless I missed any questions. Did I miss anything, Leah or Courtney? Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for being here. It's good to good to spend some time together and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great one. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you.